Hello and welcome to National Focus. I'm your presenter, Tanya Green. It's always a pleasure to have you join us. Among the major developments, Prime Minister Skerritt addresses issues re-budget 2012-2013, details of Dominica's investment in Liat, and National Cooperative Credit Union Limited to host Kadath's Lipsa competition this year. We'll bring you the details of these and other stories when National Focus returns. Stay with us. Welcome back. Time now for the details of the news. Prime Minister of Dominica and Minister for Finance, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, has revealed to GIS News that the priorities in the best interest of the country will take precedence in the 2012-2013 budget report. Honorable Skerritt said that the government must consider the decrease in the island's income and the increase in expenses. The, the new budget coming up this year, it, we are crafting the budget in, in, a, in, a, in an environment that is that is not um, very um, conducive to a number of things. I mean, you know, as I indicated, you have a drop in revenue, um, and you have to there is an increase in expenditure. Uh, so we have to now try to balance these two to ensure that um, we do not spend more than we in fact making and, and therefore the government has to look critically at what are, what are the priorities for the 2012-2013 financial year. Like every year, the citizens will expect to see every single thing addressed in a one-year budget. Now we cannot expect everything to be addressed in a one-year budget <clears throat> because we are, we are mindful of the environment. I mean, um, in the, 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 everybody around us is having challenges. They, they the Prime Minister stated that citizens can expect to see continued moves by government to reduce unnecessary spending. For the last couple of years, I've been containing um, discretionary um, 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 expenditure you understand, to ensure that we things that are not necessarily needed, we do not need to get it and put the resources in, in other more important areas to, to assist the citizens of this country. And we will see more of that oversight taking place. In, 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 the, in the weeks and months to come, where there'll be curtailing of, 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 of expenditure. I mean, and everybody has a responsibility to play. You know, our electric um, bill is too high. Our water bill is too high. Our gas bill is, is much too high. Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt said that the date for the budget report will be announced within the next few days, and the success of the new fiscal year will require the cooperation of all Dominicans. In an exclusive interview with GIS News, the Prime Minister responded to the question of whether any new taxes would be implemented. As to whether there will be new taxes in the budget, um, I, I cannot say at this time. Uh, but as we have done over the years, is that we have tried to minimize the burden on the people of Dominica in a dramatic way. Uh, because a lot of the infrastructure works has taken place, a lot of the issues in terms of the development of the economy have no real impact on the earnings of Dominicans. Dominicans. We have not asked Dominicans to, to pay one dollar more um, towards the development of this country. Um, but that having been said, there has to be a demonstration of greater responsibility on the part of every citizen in, in Dominica. The government can do so much and people therefore need to play a greater role in the development of the, com of the community and the country. In other news, residents of Tukuri gathered in large numbers on Sunday at the Roman Catholic Church to celebrate the Feast of St. Anthony. Among those attending Sunday's Mass was President of Dominica, His Excellency Dr. Nicholas Liverpool and Mrs. Liverpool, Parliamentary Representative for the Cottage Constituency, Honorable Reginald Austry, other government officials, members of the Diplomatic Corps, and scores of residents. Amen. 
Father Herman Sharpless delivered the homily at Sunday's Mass. We cannot say there is not a God. No matter how wise man or woman becomes, the things that happen cannot happen without a supreme being. And man continues to discover and continues to, 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 to move forward in its advancement, in its knowledge. But a lot of the mystery that brings about that reality is beyond man's doing. Sunday's Mass was the highlight of activities for this year's Feast of St. Anthony in Tukuri. Other activities included a fish night and a domino tournament. Dominica's Attorney General Honorable Levi Peter believes crime is a community problem and it will only be successfully addressed by the community at large. The Attorney General is also suggesting that the community has a responsibility to constructively criticize the work of the law enforcement officials to ensure that they carry out their functions in an effective manner. The Attorney General's comments came when he addressed the Forum on Crime and Violence in Marigot on Monday. At the end of the day, the combating of crime is a community problem, a community issue, and it will only be combated by the community at large. I, I, in a number of these meetings, the police come in for what we call colloquially blows. Um, sometimes I suspect that it's well deserved, other times perhaps not so much so. But at the end of the day, even when the police um, are properly criticized, it is in the interest of all of us to have an effective and productive police service, police force, however you want to describe it. So I would suggest that yes, we should criticize them, but we should criticize them with a view to helping them to improve, not really to, to break them down. Um, it's really, um, and we should of course be mindful to try to weed out the few bad apples that, that they are. I mean, most institutions have bad apples, and I, for, for one, um, will at no time suggest that our police force doesn't have um, its sheer bad apples. But I, I would hope, and the, and the chief of police is here, that if the information and the material and the evidence is available to weed out those um, bad apples when they are found, that they will be weeded out. On the question of appropriate sentencing, the Attorney General says oftentimes the public is not sufficiently aware of the facts being presented before the court, which may have positively or negatively impacted on the type of sentencing handed down by the judge. I think sometimes what we believe, in other words, perception and reality, um, are um, often divorced from each other. But I, I'm not say, saying that to say that I don't agree that in some instances um, certainly the sentences that are passed may lead people to feel that justice may not have been done. And in some cases, perhaps that may be right. But I think the difficulty of commenting on sentences where one is not privy to what the facts are uh, can be dangerous. Because, for example, I might read, pick up a newspaper and I read a headline which screams X or Y. But in truth and in fact, if you had actually sat in court and listened to the evidence, quite often you realize that the evidence that was given in court is quite different from what is screaming in the headlines. Um, so, I mean, those the, the police officers here will know and others who have had any involvement with courts and the judicial system. Quite often people give a story. Um, sometimes they even give the story to somebody who takes it down in a statement. But when they go into the witness box to give the evidence, quite often, and my experience, I've experienced that both as a magistrate, both as a practicing lawyer, Quite often the evidence that they actually give the court is very different from what they wrote in a statement or what they said in the Roman shop or what they told their friends. And so the court cannot go on that story that was told out there. The court can only go on the story that was told in court. So there, I'm just saying that to say that there are a number of factors which often influence um, the perception. In more news, the topic of investing in the regional airline Liat was discussed during a recent interview with Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt. It was announced that Dominica would inject $8 million into Liat, and Prime Minister Skerritt gave further details about that decision. He says this is a worthwhile investment. 
I think Dominicans must, Dominicans must look at things in a broader, broader, broader sense. Too many times we look at things purely from a um, parochial, partisan um, approach. In 1974, we were shareholders of Liat. You understand? We were shareholders of Liat. And when you look at the contribution of Liat to Dominica, Liat is one of the greatest contributors to our economy. If Liat were to stop flying into Dominica, how would we get from Dominica to Barbados? How would people get into Dominica? So people can discuss this thing in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a narrow way, in a biased way, and so forth. Let's look at the broader picture. Liat, Liat brings in about 60 to 70 percent of our people into the country. And we have a moral obligation to play our part. I am not in support of providing market support to any airline. And therefore, we believe that the best to, to play our part in Liat is through shareholdership. We have a role to play. We can't be criticizing Liat all the time, and Liat this, Liat that, and we up and down Liat every time. And, and I mean, we, Liat has helped us um, in recent times, if you got to a night landing and flying to Dominica put an additional flight out of Barbados so people coming from the UK and from the United States can in fact, do not, and, and Canada don't have to overnight in Barbados anymore. You can catch a 5.30 flight into Dominica. Put an extra flight out of Antigua. So the, the late flights coming from North America, um, you can catch them. Uh, you can catch the last flight coming out of, out of, out of um, Antigua. So they've helped us. There's still more to be done. But we cannot make demands on, a, on Liat, which is essentially a private. We have no interest in Liat. We can't make demands on it and expect it because it's Liat and because it's a regional carrier that they have to respond to us. We have to play our part in addressing the issues confronting Liat. You know, um, we don't think that we have the capacity to address all of the issues, but I think regional governments, all of us must play our part, as small as it may be. As small as it may be. Yes, like everything else, whatever resources we're going to invest in Liat, we can put in many other things. But just close our eyes for one second and picture Liat not flying to Dominica for for a day or two, and understand and appreciate the impact it will have on the economy. So it is by bringing people in, into the country, that brings revenue. And a new chief judge to sit as head of the OECS Supreme Court has been selected and is expected to take up office soon. This was confirmed by Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, who attended the OECS Heads of State meeting in St. Vincent last week. Although the identity of the new judge cannot be revealed at this time, Honorable Skerritt is confident that the chosen candidate is well able to fulfill his duties. As you know, so you Rollins um, has indicated his intention of the meeting office at the end of July of 2012. And the OECS heads wanted to ensure that uh, we have somebody to assume the, the post of Chief Justice. Uh, at the time, on the same day that, that um, Sir you Rollins um, would have um, demitted office. I am not in a position to, to indicate who that person is. And the chairman of the, of the OECS will inform the OECS at the appropriate time of that um, particular person. But from all reports, that person is eminently qualified to, to hold the post and uh, all, a number of considerations were, were put forward and, and that person was um, selected. Um, f to, to be appointed as Chief Justice of the OECS Supreme Court. The National Cooperative Credit Union Limited will later this year host the Kadas Lipso competition. The competition will be held in October and is part of efforts by the credit union to ensure the sustenance of Kadas music. We at NCC has pledged our support to create an avenue so that Kadas Lipso music can be returned to the international arena. In addition, we want to expose young and not so young talent to the art form. This, we think, will encourage the youth to focus their energies into more productive and meaningful tasks. As a result, Carlos Lipsa competition is on at the Newton Savannah on October 20th, 2012. The show starts at 8.30 p.m. and is priced at $40 in advance and $50 at the door. The format of the show will be as follows. There will be 15 participants performing one song each. They will compete for the first prize of 
$15,000. Second place will be $5,000, and the third place will be $2,005. The band for the night will consist of pioneers of Caras Lipso. The show will begin with the all-star band performing two songs. This will be followed by the first seven competitors' performances. There will be a break at which we will have guest performances. Then it will follow with the final eight performances. Chief Cultural Officer Raymond Lawrence, speaking at the official launch of the event on Wednesday, noted the impact Kadans has had on the promotion of Dominica's culture. Kadans music has certainly played a big role in building Dominica's culture and identity and our artists. It has helped to promote the country because culture does a lot to promote a country. If you look at Jamaica, for example, the music of Bob Marley is now well known all over the world. And it's just music. You go to Africa, you go to any part of the world now, and the music is promoted. When they hear the music, they think of Jamaica. And to a large extent, Cadence music and Bouillon and the other types of music we've had in Dominica has done the same for us here. You think of Ophelia, you think of Gordon Henderson, Exile One, Graham Max, Jeff Joseph, who passed the other day, Mikkel Henderson, um, you know, all the, the, the bands and individuals that have made big names, not just for themselves, but I'm saying for Dominica as well, for the country. And it is through music. Um, so that's why music and the other art forms are very, very important. They help to shape a country's identity. They help to build the economy as well. They provide opportunities for our artists and so to earn income from their albums and their performances. For several months, Minister for Culture, Youth and Sports, Honorable Justina Charles, had repeated calls for greater private and public sector collaboration in the promotion of Dominica's arts and culture. Wednesday's launch was a clear demonstration that collaboration of that nature is possible. She was particularly pleased that this genre of music was being promoted, bearing in mind the impact it has had on Dominica's music industry. I am also pleased that the National Cooperative Credit Union has chosen to support Cadence Lipso Music, a type of music that was created by the Dominican band Exile One in the 70s and was promoted by many other Dominican bands and artists, including Gramax and Midnight Groovers. This is music that we, want, we can claim as our own. It, in its heydays during the 70s, Cadence Lipso music was a very influential, not only in Dominica, but in the region and beyond. Cadence Lipso spread to parts of Africa and Central America. It laid the basis for the creation of newer forms of music such as Zouk, Soka, and Buyo. Cadence Lipso gave us a sense of pride and identity as a nation. While it provided entertainment, but very important is the promotion of positive lyrics that can bear positive influence on our socialization. Meantime, Minister for Tourism, Honorable Ian Douglas, has described the NCCU's event as a celebration of the achievement of Kadas music in Dominica. This example of this NCCU Kadas Lipso show is a real appreciation, not only for the icons, but for the art form. I'm very happy to be a part of it. So, so that is why um, we are here and that is why the Ministry of Tourism is involved in this activity. We, 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 we pledge our support um, to, in whatever way we can to ensure that um, this event is a success. And that's the English segment of the news. We now join Macpherson St. Louis for the Creole Highlights. Hello tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole. Non moi c'est Macpherson St. Louis. Premièrement, le Premier ministre Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt représente Dominique en bon meeting au ICS qui détient en St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Selon Honorable Skerritt, l'Union économique au ICS ensemble et puis au ICS Assembly of Parliamentarians, ça c'est le Parlement opposition, te subjet à tête qui tape attention en meeting cela. Honorable Skerritt aussi fait parole qui a discuté de manière pour formaliser le revised Treaty of Bastet. Ça fait qu'à continuer à assembler mon parlement, si l'on a un spirit, qui est en place tout de suite, qui en est discuté bagaille régional ou ICS, il y a espoir. 
za fe economic crisis sa se sa fe ki ka affecte pay ou ICS ki ka affecte la tela a poison ou si diskite en meeting sala on a discovered fe pa wall ki subje sa la ki tape dot attention pendant meeting monetary council ki ke pon plas en saint kitts plita mo sala a dat nouvel gouvernement dam nek bati proje kai en kalinago Paul Sala sorti on minister kini responsibility pou zafè kai honorable regional austrian si l'homme minister austrian se kai sala ki se pawe ba pep kalinago nou refuse an ti bon l'argent hot gouvernement am am chinois am pou nou bati ti bon kaz am pey kwaib kon sa am lane pase nou te tape l'argent hot venezuela lè nou bati a 39 kaz am pey kwaib se kaz sala nou deja distribute yo moun ka vive dan yo Après ça, nous 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 10 dans encore pour pour taper pli parce que nous connaît nous faire ça nous ca taper mais qualité travail et nous ca tok taper moun ca travail plus sérieux et il plus aisé pour nous manager projet là là nous fait 40 cas dans un low problème pour pour management parce que on est pour manager 40 cas 6 6 different contractors il très difficile pour ministre en ministre là manager ça comme ça nous 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 couper un petit morceau comme ça nous ca battre toi pas toi pas toi là au fini nous nous ça retenda et si tenda bon nous que pour encore Si, si nous tapons mais attendre nous que pour l'autre monde comme ça moi quoi qui um, um, peut-être un uh, petit uh, bon semaine qui va venir nous que nous que nous cérémonie là nous que délivrer ces cases là pour pour peuple pour peuple um, pour peuple um, 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 pays quoi ça fait qu'à concerner préservation biodiversité que discuter pendant son met développement sustainable qui qu'a prend place en Rio Brazil semaine salam Paul Sala sorti au ministre Evion honorable docteur Kenneth Darum za fè enerje geothermic et pi green economy ke osi diskite dam nik sa se signeto a a a a a lo se 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 di fè wè kon konvensyon sa to sa nou kal fè ri yo ri yo kal kal diskute pou wè o la nou ye kom ti di sin 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 yam sin yam yon de peyi ki bouzwen step up ki bouzwen fè si nou ni pou mete am si nou ni pou mete lwa an plas pou nou pou nou se step up se bagay sa evè kom ou dewam renewable energy kom ou mou jan pale kod renewable energy nou ka develope nou ka develope am nou ka develope am diotemal nou evè kom ou dewam dam 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 nek zak koman se gwen ekonomi nou nou ni am an an pastataj am am elektrisite nou ka veni hot hot glow Ok, so nou ka ve koman nou sa step sa op, eve, eve mou kwe di yo te mal, eve kom mou tou jou di se, se sa ki ni potential la tjelman pou, pou an nou mete nou, me mete nou an le next level la ki nou toujou ka pale kont. Finalman, Minis Public Works bien plezi pou travay ki ka fet a si chime an gwon fon. Travay de Japon plas pou gwon ni chime sa la, bagay Public Works ka ekspekte sou la je moun, vwati epi dot moun ki ka seve chime sa la. Travay komansi a si proje sa la apwe mouve de lej, te bien domaje l'anne pase. On delegasyon an pami minister Public Works, Honorable Rigon Blackmore, man palyeman Honorable Ivo Stevenson, ansam epi ofisi offshore civil and marine, vizite proje sa la semen pase. Man palyeman Honorable Ivo Stevenson, fe parol ki i ben satisfe katite travay ki deja fet epi ka gade du van, le ki fini, i ki an bon kondisyon pou moun sevi. An menm to osi, Minister Public Works Honorable Ribbon Blackmore fe pa wol ki gouvernman deja dipanse 500 mil dola la jen nou a se proje sa la. Minister la osi fe pa wol ki lot faz proje sa la se pou bati dal e pi pou kolas chime sa la. Misi medam, sa se tout pou nou velen kweol pou apwezan. Nou mwen se Maktrisen Sen Lous. Au vwa. When we come back, we'll bring you a few upcoming events and government notices. Do stay with us. You're watching GIS. 
All farmers of Pebush and Dodan are kindly requested to attend a meeting on Thursday, 21st June at the Pebush Government School at 4 p.m. The Minister of Agriculture and senior officials of the Division of Agriculture will be present and transportation will be arranged for farmers of Dodan. Please make a special effort to attend and to be on time. All those concerned are asked to note the following hurricane shelters and shelter managers for the communities of Colliho, Maho and Salisbury. Colliho, your hurricane shelter is the Colliho Catholic Church where the shelter manager is Eric Williams Jr. and his assistant is Alan John. In Maho, your hurricane shelters are 1. The ground floor of the Maho Government School the shelter manager there is Davidson Motley John, and the assistant shelter manager is John, John Baptist. Two, the Maho Crisis Center. And three, the Maho Berian Church. The shelter manager at the church is Ian Ishmael, and the assistants are Mr. and Mrs. Bernard LeBlanc. Four, the Maho Gospel Tabernacle. Lena Augustine is the shelter manager, and her assistants are Michael Hector and Brian Vidal. In Salisbury, your two hurricane shelters are one, the ground floor of the Salisbury Gospel Mission Church. The shelter manager is Warrington Antwine. His assistant is Motley George. And the Salisbury Baptist Church, where Henry Langley is the shelter manager. And management and staff of the center where adolescents learn to love and serve calls wishes to inform the general public that applications are presently being accepted for the next program which will commence on Monday 3rd September at 8 a.m. Registration ends on July 6 at 2 p.m. Applicants must be at least 16 years of age or will turn 16 by December 2012. Birth certificates and a registration fee of $10 must accompany the application. A recommendation letter from your last school will be appreciated. A parent or guardian must accompany the applicant and applications are considered on a first-come, first-serve basis. And members of the public are asked to take note of the following numbers which could prove useful during the hurricane season. The Office of Disaster Management located in Jimit. The telephone number is 448-8831 and the hotline is 448-7777. The Dominica Met Service Office located at the Canefield Airport. The telephone number there is 449-1990 while the fax number is 449-2020. The Dominica Met Service located at the Melville Hall Airport. The telephone number there is 445-7878, while the fax number is 445-7849. The weather hotline is 447-5555, or you may visit the website at www.weather.gov.dm for updated weather reports. Up next is your tip of the day. Today we'll talk to you about proper time management. Learn to say no. Don't take on more than you can handle. For the distractions that come in when you're doing other things, give a firm no or defer it to a later period. And that's National Focus. As usual, we invite your suggestions or your comments. So please feel free to drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or you can visit our website at news.gov.dm or you could visit our GIS Dominica page on YouTube and Facebook. On behalf of the entire news team, I'm your presenter, Tanya Green. Thank you so much for watching and do remember to join us again tomorrow.